Uh, someone in my family, and I won't, I won't name them, has been quite unwell recently, and it sort of lends perspective on time that you maybe wish you spent with them more. <laughs> this situation just was so unfortunate. When something does go wrong, I can be like, I don't regret anything. It's quite rewarding, actually. Yeah, funny, yeah. Because when I am picking up my phone and no one's messaged me, or my family haven't replied to me yet, uh, or mm. no one's replied to my Instagram story that I asked for stuff on the podcast, it's a bit like, ah. Oh. But I post it two minutes ago. Yeah. And people have other things going on. Yeah. So if I look back in a couple of hours' time and have the chance to, and people have replied, yeah. I'm like, okay, it's valued. It's rewarding. It's right. rewarding. So I never thought about it. Like um, that. Yeah, if you are in that space, try that, and I guarantee it will help. And if it doesn't, then talk to Tom. Yeah, <laughs> I want this. Um, I want this next section to be interactive, and the more we do stuff like this, the more we want you guys to comment to build a community as well. This was a question you said to me on text, and I'm going to put it back to you. And it says, "What makes you smile, and what are you grateful for at the moment?" Right at this moment in time, it can be more poignant actually, because uh, someone in my family, and I won't, I won't name them. Um, has been quite unwell recently and it sort of lends perspective on time that you maybe wish you spent with them more mm. and um, it's quite scary actually when someone becomes ill in your family and you'll know this is you really start to think about all the times you had with them the things you re start regretting should I've said this more all that kind of stuff and so for me it'd be family in a word sort of being more grateful for my family and and I'm very, I'm very grateful and very lucky to have very good friends and family around me that I see mm. often. There are people who don't see the family enough for whatever reason. So I'm very grateful for my family. My family are everything to me, especially when something happens like it has done recently. Um, and there's an interesting thing about this, if I sort of waffle on for a minute, is I was in Bristol a week before last and <laughs> J Jake, the guy I went traveling with, went to Bristol to get a lot of his stuff and from <laughs> we took a van down and uh, the van broke down on the way home. So we're sort of three hours from home and uh, the van broke down, load of issues happened thereafter and we couldn't leave Bristol, we were stuck there the entire night. It genuinely, it was, it was an absolute shit show. If I named everything that happened, it would be here for hours. <laughs> but long story short, if that were me, maybe six months ago, a year ago, a couple of years ago, it would have really bothered me. I'd have gone, yeah. I'd have been an anxious mess, I've been stressed, but me and I just laughed and I was like, We've we've been dealt a shit hand, but it is what it is. Yeah. Like it's it's unfortunate, and we're in a bit of a shit situation. And it, it could have only happened to me, him and I. Like this situation just was so unfortunate. And for those that follow me on Instagram, would have known the sort of the bare bones of what happened. I got home about nine thirty a.m. the next morning, and we're there the entire day in Bristol. And because of what was happening with my family, I didn't care as much. I was like, you know, there are so many worse things happening in my life right now to other people who I love more than anything in the whole wide world. Yeah, this is nothing. And it didn't bother me. Yeah. I was like, it's un it's unfortunate, but like, it could be so much worse. And so we just smiled about it, paid 800 pounds to come <laughs> home with a tow truck. But then I was like, it's money. Yeah. It's money at the end of the day. Like, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's rubbish. Yeah, it's unfortunate and it's stressful and I miss a day of work the day after, but I'll laugh about it with him in a couple of months time or yeah. a couple of years time because I'll never forget that story. Be good memories. So yeah, that for me was a, a real telltale story of, something that would have bothered me a while back now didn't really bother me that mm. much. And it's like, it lends perspective on the, the important things in your life. And that is for me, family. Mm. That's funny you said that because I'm actively trying to go out of my way to be more grateful and appreciative mm. for things that are going right. Mm -hmm. And everything, you know, I've got problems going on in the family behind the scenes, people, you know, having surgery and stuff like that, doesn't matter. But I think you don't appreciate things like that until something goes wrong. Mm -hmm and I don't want something to go wrong and I want to appreciate it when I can mm. and when something eventually does go wrong or someone passes away I can be like you know what I made the most of it because I think a lot of my life I've been you know this isn't just with family but in general being like oh I wish I did that I wish I mm. said that to this person I wish I fixed this relationship I wish I did this and I think it's just knowing like if something does go wrong like all of us people watching us we could all walk out of this room now and get hit by a car that's mm -hmm. like you can't control these things and it's like i want to know that i've done everything in my power to appreciate everything and make the most and be positive about these things yeah, so when something does go wrong i can be like i don't regret anything mm -hmm. and i think that's a huge thing that i'm sort of grateful for myself to come into that realization at the moment and it's from talking to people like yourself from people we have on have like built this sort of mindset I'm growing every day mm -hmm. 
and it's so nice that I've kind of come to that at a young age because I know there's a lot of people who could be watching this who probably lost loved ones or lost friends and been like, I can't believe I, I can't believe I did, didn't tell him this. Yeah. I can't believe I didn't tell her this. And I think it's nice. I'm kind of realizing that and I'm actively going out of my way to to do those things as mm -hmm. well. And I think um, one thing that makes me smile at the moment is knowing people back me in a way and people are starting to trust me. Mm -hmm. And I heard this quote from Lady Gaga, which is funny because Joe sent me a video this morning of him in the gym listening to Lady Gaga. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Lady Gaga said, there could be 30 million people in a room and it only takes one person to believe in you. I love that. And I think that's so true. Yeah. And just having the belief from someone that you are you know, doing the right thing. Because at the start, you know, not many people, everyone's like, why are you doing this? I'm like, oh, mate, this is a silly idea. This looks a bit weird. And you're like, oh, okay. But now when people start to believe and they're like, you can do this. It's just that, that reassurance you need. And that makes me smile at the moment is I've got that a couple of times now where I've been like, needed that. Thanks, buddy. Mm. And then I go and like crack on with the day or talking to Joe where I'm like, yeah, needed that chat. Thanks, buddy. And mm. then I go and crack on again. It's little things like that just makes such a big difference. I think um, added to that, I think, um, and I, I'm sort of, I, I'm a real big believer in this. And I, I, I sort of do bang the, the sort of the, the man drum a lot. So I think that men just get like, we're just getting shafted at the minute. Like I think that, that you look around and you think that men haven't got it easy. No one's got it easy. Like life just nah. fucking sucks at the minute. If, we, if, we look, if, we, if we're being frank, being like life is, honest. life sort of isn't, isn't great. Um, going to the supermarkets yesterday and seeing a block of cheese in one of those plastic like locked containers so it can't be nicked. It's like, I'm like, this is just rubbish. Like what, 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 what are we doing? Mm. Um, anyway. Um, so like, if, <laughs> anyway. well, I, I feel like, you know, added to what you were saying, I think men don't get enough praise. Mm. This isn't, this is a thing that I always see. It's like men will go the whole day and most of their life without getting praise. And that's not like telling them they're amazing at anything. It's like, oh, mate, your shoes are wicked. Mm. I kind of say, you're, you're, where'd you get those from? And I guarantee if you were to sit on a, on a train with someone and you see another guy's jeans, watch, hairstyle, just compliment him. Men don't get compliments. No. So the, you'd be amazed the difference it makes just someone telling you, like you said, with, with belief. It's someone believing in you. And this isn't just about men, by the way, like women as well. But women are like almost designed to compliment each other. You go on Instagram and you look at any woman's Instagram page, friend, family, whatever, and they post anything from anywhere on mm. holiday. And they'll be like, oh my God, you look amazing and you look stunning and what that dress is beautiful. Men don't get that. Men just abuse each other. And that's like almost <laughs> in their psyche to be like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you fat mess! What are you doing on that beach? Just sort of push t-shirt on. It's like you know, I get the banter behind it, yeah. but actually, deep rooted within that, there's a lot of insecure men out there who are just craving just some level of a, not attention, but it's just some level of love from people, and not just lo love in like a sort of pervy way mm. from sort of attention from girls. It's more just their peers and the people around them, other other men, to be like, mate, it looks like you had a wicked holiday. Like, mm. Traveling looked, looked awesome. And yeah, that feels, that will actually make your day. And yeah. it's something so small that I think we as blokes could really, really work on. And just, what would we want? Therefore, feed it out to the world and it will come back on you. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Couldn't say it better. Awesome, brother. Wicked. First episode back. If you guys did like this episode, please like, subscribe, and drop down in the comments who you want to see on the podcast going forward. We're inviting a ton of guests on at the moment planning behind the scenes we've also got a lot of exciting things coming up we're going to be at a podcast show event type thing in may if yeah. anyone wants to come down to the podcast ex oh, expo that's what mm. they're called podcast expo and come see us we love to come and chat with you guys but for the meantime that's it from me that's it for me as well this is inside of mine Woo! take it easy